Migrating to cloud can be intimidating with a ton of things to worry about. How can you build a solid foundation for a seamless migration? Well, keep watching to find out. Welcome to Cloud Migration 101, where we share migration tips and tricks. When planning your migration to Google Cloud, you need to understand some concepts related to cloud architecture. A poorly planned foundation can cause your business to face delays, confusion, downtime, and can put the success of your cloud migration at risk. For today's episode, I have brought a friend from Solutions Architect team who will walk us through building our cloud foundations. Grasp as much as you can, and I'll see you on the other side. Hi, I'm Travis. When migrating from an on-premises environment or colo-managed data center to the cloud, there are many things to consider from the IT, engineering, and business perspectives. Today, let's cover the topics that an IT manager needs to think about when migrating to Google Cloud. There are a few questions you'll want to ask yourself. First, how do your existing business and organizational structures map to Google Cloud? Second, who from your team will control, administer, and audit access to Google Cloud resources? Third, what are best practices for managing multiple teams working simultaneously on multiple Google Cloud projects? Let's start with the first question. How do you model your existing business and organizational structures in Google Cloud? You'll want to map your existing lines of reporting and communication to your resource hierarchy. The resource hierarchy provides structure to your cloud environment, determines the way you are built, and establishes a security model for granting roles and permissions. It's like the skeleton for all your cloud resources. For example, a Compute Engine VM is a resource which falls within a project and folder, and all of these are contained within an organization. Now, how do you control access to cloud resources? Once the resource hierarchy is in place, you can apply security permissions at each of these levels. These permissions are then inherited by any child objects in the hierarchy. For example, if you get full admin privileges on Department Y's folder, you will have full admin privileges on all of the projects and resources below it. These hierarchies can be as complex or as simple as your organization requires. A member is who or what you want to give permission to. A role is a collection of specific permissions to determine what operations can be performed on a resource. And a policy binds one or more members to a particular role. Once you have a policy, you'll be able to clearly define who can do what on what resources. As a simple equation, members plus roles equals policy. Let's take a specific example. An enterprise wants to create a policy for controlling access to all of their virtual machines. They might use instance admin and app engine admin roles. Then they can create a Google group for the ops team that will manage the instances and the policy would link the members and the roles together. They could then create a read-only policy, including log viewer and instance viewer roles for their support team members, and perhaps a policy with the PubSub publisher role for the service account of one of their microservices. That would be three separate policies. That's the relationship between IAM and the resources, projects, and folders. Now, once you have the resources in Google Cloud, the question comes, how do your teams actually interact with them? There are four ways to interact with Google Cloud services, and your IAM permissions will control what you can do with all of them. First, we have the Cloud Console, the graphical user interface that lets you interact with Google Cloud within your browser. Second, we have the Cloud APIs that provide programmatic interfaces for interacting with Google Cloud from your application code. Third, the Cloud SDK, which is a developer-friendly software library that enables your applications to interact with Cloud APIs. And lastly, we have the G Cloud command line tool that lets you make calls to the Cloud API directly from your command line. That was great, Travis. Thank you. Thanks. You take it from here. I got it. Well, today we learned about resource hierarchies, access control, permissions using IAM, and the four methods of interacting with Google Cloud services. Want more details? Check out the entire guide linked below. And stay tuned for the next episode where we will talk about building a landing zone and running your workloads in cloud. In the meantime, give us a like and subscribe to never miss Google Cloud migration tips.